So this is part 3 in my series covering the recent Ackman vs Quantum TV drama, so if you have no idea what's going on I recommend you watch those videos first, and also subscribe to this channel with notifications on so you don't miss future updates. But for those of you who have seen those videos, you'll already know how insane Jay Station was in his criticism towards Ackman, so this time we will be showing some critiques against Ackman that are a little less insane. One of the first people to speak out against the Ackman on Twitter was Papa Gut, who quote tweeted him and said, Some personal advice. You were too emotionally involved in this situation to a point where you might end up ending your career. You were right to call out Quantum TV, but you were at the point of self-destruction. The Actman responds by saying, What kind of son would I be if I didn't get emotionally involved? Genuine question. Papa Gut then responds, Genuine answer in your DMs. Okay, Papa Gut, I'm trying to make an entertaining video here. Why do you want to be respectful and withhold the juicy drama from us? Why can't you be like this guy and just leak all of Actman's DMs on stream? Holy shit. Okay, I'm getting way too ahead of myself now. I will cover that guy later in the video. But for now, let's look at Novair's response to Papa Gut's tweet. They say, To be honest, I don't agree with this. Actman literally got demonetized in a bunch of videos age-restricted. YouTube is acting out of spite and not enforcing rules. Sorry, but not everything everyone says is a joker arc. Papa Gut responds, He got demonetized because of the original tweets joking about doxing YouTube members. Please do your due diligence on a topic before speaking on it in an uninformed manner. Nove responds, Which are obviously jokes meant to push the message that YouTube isn't doing their job. It's not that big of a deal for YouTube to be acting like kids. Mischief responds to Papa Gut by saying, Apparently mocking YouTube for their inaction is being too emotionally involved? This is literally just a bullshit excuse from YouTube to try and justify them removing the act man from the partner program. Papa Gut responds, You are probably right, but he's been demonetized. My advice is to take his foot off the gas so he avoids a deeper punishment which he clearly doesn't deserve. That doesn't mean he should stop his advocation. It means he should be more careful about it. Mischief responds, He is being. Hence why he's not uploaded another YouTube video as of yet. Papa Gut responds, The dude's career is on the line. I've been in the same position, former job not YouTube wise. My advice doesn't mean give up. It's about planning to fight another day. Quantum TV who does a great job being shameless and manipulative. Reposting the jokes isn't helpful. That's my advice. Keemstar responds to Papa Gut by saying, You are quickly becoming the king of bad takes. Papa Gut responds, I'm sorry you feel threatened that I'm taking that title from you. Another notable person in the community who shared some more in-depth thoughts on the Ackman situation was Nicholas Diorio who tweeted out, I'm not gonna nitpick the coverage on Quantum TV. The guy is super cringe and asked for people to still talk about him. I think people are being too hard on Actman. He quoted clips of the department chair and VP of YouTube in a video describing their harassment policy. Even if the presentation was a little stupid, no one would reasonably expect this outcome. People said worse about Susan for years. I understand things could have happened outside his intentions, and that the 60k channel wasn't worth risking it all over. But YouTubers typically argue, we are not in control of our audience. And I don't think Actman knew he was risking anything. He just critiqued a YouTube video. The veil of hindsight dictates it was stupid to play clips of high-ranking employees and splice them with clips of Quantum TV saying homophobic shit and making a meta-doxing joke on Twitter. I just don't think anyone could have predicted how hard the hammer would come down. Actman responds by saying, Was it stupid? Or was it effective editing that illustrated YouTube wasn't enforcing their policies? Nicholas Diorio responds, You misunderstand me. The editing was fine and showcased your point well. The criticism I've seen is, it's stupid, in hindsight, to name and shame powerful YouTube employees who could slash seemingly did target you with little oversight. So I'm saying, I think it could be considered stupid, but it's a bit irrational to expect you to have known the full extent of the consequences, as your demonetization is pretty different than anything we have seen before. Mischief quote tweets part of Nick's thread and says, Probably the best take on the situation I've seen. In hindsight, the tweets were stupid, but absolutely no one thought it'd lead to channel demonetization before YouTube did it. Speaking of Mischief, he also makes this tweet, showing that YouTube deleted their tweet after Optimus ratioed them and says, This is undeniably YouTube taking active action to hide what's going on. They literally took their tweet down because Optimus responded in regards to the hashtag Justice for Actman situation and ended up ratioing them. Optimus responds by saying, Laughing my ass off, no way! YouTube really took down the tweet I ratioed them on like I'm not about to bring all this up during my meeting with them in a few days and call them out directly to their face. Three days later, Optimus follows up his tweet by saying, This meeting was randomly cancelled with zero follow-up given to me about a potential new meeting time slash date or anything. Very suspicious. 
YouTube has literally ghosted me on a completely unrelated meeting after I publicly stated I was bringing this up. Hashtag justice for Actman. The purpose of this meeting was literally to give them feedback as a large creator, and to help guide the platform in the direction that creators want it to be driven in. Apparently attempting to do so ruffled some feathers. I knew this would happen too. All too predictable. Actman responds to him by saying, That sounds fishy as fuck. JJ Ross responds to Optimus by saying, It honestly would have been more dramatic if you never said you were going to bring up the Actman before the meeting, and instead just bring it up at the meeting and stunlock them right then and there. If they don't give an answer, then something shady is going on behind the scenes. Optimus quote tweets him and says, The reason I brought it up is because I was 90% sure they'd cancel the meeting. Now they look even worse. It would have been a simple corporate answer to my face had I not said anything. Now YouTube looks bad for ghosting a creator on an unrelated meeting over criticism. Lol. The quartering makes similar sentiments towards YouTube in regards to how they are handling the Actman situation when he tweets out. Let's be very clear. The Actman was demonetized by YouTube for criticizing YouTube. It was retaliatory, petty, and entirely shocking as a creator who has been on the platform making the money for the last 10 years. Hashtag justice for Actman. Why is YouTube relaying information about platform bans directly to Philip DeFranco? That doesn't seem right. They told him why the Actman was banned before they said anything publicly. The quartering then shares this clip with the caption, Former director of creator development at Twitch with maybe the worst take in history on Actman. I have to assume he just knows nothing about this situation. Yikes. Hashtag justice for Actman. And because it's kind of like a sensitive topic, right. we're talking- It's a sensitive topic because it makes it like, it because it highlights where you fucked up. And you didn't want to paint a picture that included you fucking up. That's fucking, that's like what an eight-year-old does. Like, that's the action of a young child who, like, doesn't want to get in trouble or whatever. But you drum, you made yourself a victim in this, pointed the finger at YouTube and other creators, and it was your actions that got you demonetized. This right here is so fucked. And I hope that if someone takes anything away from this, it's the following. Actman responds to this by saying, This is why doing even the smallest amount of research can prevent you from looking like an idiot. Days later, Quartering comments on this again when he says, I cannot believe YouTube is still punishing the Actman. I mean, come on. You've made your point by now, right? We get it. No talk of doxing people, even if it's ironic and pointing out hypocrisy. Seriously, aren't there bigger issues? Yeah, there are bigger issues. Like me not being able to find any way to transition into covering the tweets Actman made about this situation after the release of my first video. So I guess I'll just start reading them. YouTube says, give yourself a gift today, relaxation. To which Actman responds with a sad emoji. Actman then tweets out this meme of Quantum TV saying, no, you can't just expose me for ban evading. Actman responds, ha ha, way back machine go brr. A donkey monkey responds to Actman by saying, give it a rest, man. I know it's fun to meme and laugh. But for real, you were coming off as unhinged. I get why, but maybe sit on your hands for a minute. The Actman responds, I probably should, but every time these thoughts of giving it a rest come into my head, I remember that my livelihood was just taken from me. And worse yet, justice has yet to be served. Quinn responds by saying, Why not move over to another channel? All the support you've gotten is proof you'd bounce back pretty quickly, no? Actman responds, At this point, I'm completely demoralized from making any videos, to be honest. Jason responds to Actman by saying, Yeah. The Wayback Machine is so epic, <laughs> Showing five plus year old tweets of Actman using offensive language. Actman responds by saying, if you are going to bring up old edgy irrelevant tweets that I already condemned 50 plus times, then will you at least crop out the redundant ones? I know people like you really want me to be a racist, and I'm truly sorry to disappoint you that I'm not. Actman then continues tweeting about the situation when he says, I would rather YouTube be a better platform without me than a terrible platform with me, and that's why I continue to speak out even if it means I might never be monetized again. Content creators should not live in constant fear of being next on the chopping block. I tried my best to prevent YouTube from having the brand slash image it does now. One of a company who openly supports your right to use their platform to wish for death and violence against the LGBT plus community, and all during Pride Month. 
Hashtag YouTube sides with hate. Hashtag justice for Actman. Elika Trash responds to Actman by saying, Well, it shouldn't just be LGBT plus people. Anyone who wishes for death and violence upon anyone shouldn't have a major voice on a major platform. Doesn't matter who is being threatened. Actman responds, True that. I just find it especially reprehensible that YouTube still tries to maintain the facade that they care about the LGBT community through all this. Willie Macro quote tweets Actman and says, So your argument is that YouTube hates LGBT. I thought yesterday you were saying that wasn't the case. Actman responds by saying, I didn't say they hate LGBT. I said they've unintentionally given their brand the image that they fully support your right to promote violence against them. I don't know why you continue to misrepresent what I'm saying. He then shares this coolie Bravo tweet from 2017 that says, Twitter, the only place where well-articulated sentences still get misrepresented. You can say, I like pancakes, and somebody will say, so you hate waffles? No, bitch, that's a whole new sentence. What the fuck you talking about? Actman then tweets out this clip of Quantum TV with the caption, YouTube. He's still talking about doxing people and their families on his channel. Quantum TV posted this four days ago. This man must be stopped. But imagine though, let me word this in a way you can understand. How would you feel if instead of my picture looking like this, this was your mother, this was your sister, this was your brother, and I had doxed them on my community tab and put their faces out there for everybody to see looking like this because I thought it was funny. And then I go on and I attack their sexual orientation and their religion unapologetically. I'm pretty sure you'd want it off the platform, right? You, you would get it then if you saw your little boy right there on my community tab being doxed. You wouldn't like that shit 1%. Actman follows up his tweet by saying, Context of what he's responding to. He's upset that Review Tech USA put his face in a community post. So Quantum TV is comparing that to using his community page to dox Review Tech USA's family. Psychopathic behavior. HJD responds to Actman by saying, don't get me wrong, I hate the guy for the things he's said and done, but this is pure bait. He isn't talking about doxing people here. He's simply mentioning it as part of a poor hypothetical example of why he doesn't like an image being posted of him. Keep the argument pure. Ackman responds by saying, You might have been onto something if he hadn't actually used his community page to dox Ninjitkian multiple times. I do want to be ethical with the support and donations people send my way. I appreciate it, but I don't want my monetization to get reinstated and then have a flood of new cash coming in from people who felt bad. Please do not donate, sub, or support only out of sympathy. I still don't know if I'll be remonetized, by the way. The suspension was indefinite. I'm just clarifying where I stand with all the support. I keep being told that I should be quiet and get my monetization back, but this is an issue that affects everyone. What will happen when the next Quantum TV harasses the next mischief? Will the system fuck them over too? YouTube needs policy reform. Heemstar responds by saying, policy enforcement, to which Actman responds, you mean they don't want EDP back? All right, now it's time to finally talk about the guy I mentioned at the beginning of this video who leaked Actman's DMs on his stream, Tommy C. The feud between him and Actman started a couple days ago when he uploaded a stream criticizing Actman and someone called James posted it on Twitter asking people what they thought of Tommy's coverage. Mari responded to him by saying, honestly, I see the Quantum TV drama with the Actman separate from the situation between YouTube and the Actman. While Quantum TV is dumb as fuck, I don't see any solid proof of him copyright claiming. While I also have haven't seen him tell his fans publicly to dox or share one on the Actman. It's clear he did dox to call Actman's mom. At the end of the day, I don't see Quantum TV deserving of a ban, unless there is solid proof he is actually falsely copyright striking people. As for the YouTube, I don't fully see what they did as justified since the Actman's tweet was truly sarcasm. They should have at least had some discussion with him. Basically, the Quantum TV drama was blown out of proportion, and he got way more attention than he deserved. And the YouTube situation, I feel, is unjustified. Willie Maxwell responds to Mari by saying, Calling someone isn't doxing. Nicholas Diorio responds, I would say getting her phone number and contacting her would be doxing. Willie responds, I get it. That's just not what it is. Calling someone isn't doxing, though. It's shitty. It's creepy. It literally isn't what it is, though. At least, I thought it was releasing people's info to the public with malicious intent. Nicholas responds, I think gathering it with the intent to harass is good enough for my book, and I typically wouldn't engage in semantics definition arguments when it's this blatant. Willie responds, it's important to get a definition of doxing, because that would be why YouTube didn't take action. Can we not condemn it and still say it's not doxing? Willie then shares the Google definition of dox. Nicholas responds by saying, yeah, I don't disagree that this is the written definition. I just don't think there's a meaningful difference that I would go rush to correct. He isn't as bad as someone who tweeted 
tweeted it out publicly. But the idea was to use private info as intimidation. Fuck them. Willy responds, it is meaningful though, cause it's the difference of breaking TOS or not. Actman responds by saying, bro, I have no idea what kind of drugs you're on, but let's say we disqualify the doxing in the hate speech as you suggest. Alright, we still have copyright abuse, child safety policy, scams, cyberbullying and harassment, harmful or dangerous content, and external links. Willy responds by saying, I feel like you are taking this as me defending Quantum. No, I'm just trying to get everything straight. It's important to understand. Actman responds by saying, You are willfully misunderstanding everything just as you did on Augie's podcast, where you claimed there was no proof of Quantum TV copywriting people. I showed you the proof of that, and you still didn't get it. Now you've changed the goalposts and are doing the same with the doxing. Willy responds, All I did on Augie's podcast is ask questions so I got direct answers from you. I still have to verify everything you said on Augie's podcast podcast. It's basic research. It's not me willfully misunderstanding. This is a good thing for me to do. Actman responds, I still have to verify it. Laughing my ass off. You already demonstrated your lack of research by not knowing these things. You were uninformed and simply being a contrarian for the sake of being a contrarian in the face of undeniable evidence. Tommy C tweets out, When I think about it now, the Actman tried to get Quantum TV kicked off of YouTube legitimately. I mean, Quantum TV intimidated and harassed his family. His ego could not handle that he didn't have the power to get him kicked. He then made a risky video and it backfired. A sad true story. The Actman responds, "Ew, the way you phrase this is intellectually dishonest. This wasn't about ego. This is about how YouTube could overlook mountains of evidence regardless of how many people provided it. But nice narrative you were trying to spin. Slater responds by saying, I mean, it's Tommy C. The guy is known for god awful takes. Tommy C quote tweets him and says, I'm known for getting it right long before it became a thing. I'm Alex, first tint 2017. John Swan, first First Tint 2019. The Act Man, Write It Down 2020. The Act Man responds by saying, The smoking gun you were looking for that clears Quantum TV doesn't exist. If into the archives you search, only pain you will find. Tommy C then leaks his DMs with the Act Man and captions them by saying, He seems to think I'm like other YouTubers that care about talking to big ones for clout. The one thing he refuses to do is say why my opinion is wrong. My opinion is as follows. He fucked himself because of ego. All I get is the red herring fallacy of, YOU SUPPORT QUANTUM TV! Reeeeee! The DMs start with the Actman sending out his Discord tag. Tommy C responds by saying, No, I don't want to talk to you in private, because I saw you were contradicted yourself with both Augie and Willy. You have also been dishonest with me by putting me and others in the Quantum TV camp when pointing out your bad moves. This is true intellectual dishonesty. Having an opinion about how bad you fucked yourself up is not. I don't trust you. You seem to shift gears depending on who you talk to. I have no reason to think you will not do the same with me in private. To make it short, I don't need to defend myself from your allegation that I'm trying to blow the lid off of this story in Quantum TV's favor. You have already made that clear. Any call would be a waste of both our time. I deal with this the way I always. Best of luck. Sorry about your channel. Honestly, TC. Actman responds by saying, Thought you were made of sterner stuff. Oh well, stick to the conspiracy theories. Continue being a contrarian for the sake of it. Tommy responds, Proves my point. Waste of my time. Actman responds, You and I both know what your intentions are. I just sniff you out. That's why you chicken out. Go look through the evidence. By all means, I'll send you anything you request. Don't drink yourself, stupid man. You've been doing that a lot. He then shares a DM from Ninjikun that says, Yeah, I checked out his YouTube. Not interested in talking to him. Nicholas Diorio responds to Tommy's DM leak by saying, I'm so confused on what is going on. I thought we wanted him to show proof of DMCA. We now have two pretty clear indicators that this did happen, on at least those occasions. I guess I don't understand this hostility? I understand he hit your radar, and you aren't exactly sold on Actman as a person. I also agree with you in regards to the LGBT tweet being way over the top, but I thought we got the info we were looking for last night, and cleared all that stuff up at least. Sam Slees responds by saying, So does Actman need to make a clarification or retraction video? Nicholas responds, I don't believe so. He accused Quantum TV of false DMCA copyright strikes. He showed evidence of at least two occasions where you could see at a glance this was the case. At least for me, I am convinced this is a fair criticism to make. Augie quote tweets Tommy and says, Everyone keeps criticizing Actman for getting too emotionally invested in the story, but is now themselves getting too emotionally invested in calling out Actman. Actman isn't the bad guy here, and he provided the proof to the question everyone had for him last night. Also, Tommy C isn't a bad guy either. I get his frustration at being called a quantum TV simp, but I don't think cancelling a private or public conversation with Actman 
Pac-Man, when he's proven time and time again to be more than reasonable, is a good idea. Nick responds by saying, We of all people know what it's like to be bombarded for not having the publicly deemed correct take. It's super annoying to get swarmed by drones. Although I disagree with them, I totally respect the conviction. Mischief responds to Augie by saying, The thing is that they could have simply done minimum research and watched mine, Review Tech USA, and the Actman's videos to see the proof. Actman quote tweets Tommy C and says, Tommy C, I know your intentions. You seek to turn this case around, and I'm telling you, there is nothing. Love how the guy calling me out for ego posts the DMs where he refuses to voice chat with me. You know who else refused to do that? Elvis the Alien responds by saying, Dude, Tommy's a clown. Don't engage with him. He'll amount to nothing. Callie responds to Actman by saying, Who is he anyway? Deadman's Ravioli responds by saying, I only remember him as some guy who rode the coattails of Keemstar a few years back. Callie responds, Why am I not fucking surprised he was butt buddies with Keem? Actman responds, Keem got my back though. He ain't stupid. Keem isn't ignoring the evidence. Actman then posts a clip of JStation with the caption, JStation just uploaded a video calling my mom at 3am. This is real laughing my ass off. Clarification, it's obviously fake. He didn't call my mom actually. What's up guys? Welcome back to another 3 a.m. challenge. Today we are calling Ant-Man's mom at 3 a.m. Oh my god, what is she gonna do guys? Let's smash the like button right now guys. Let's get it. Alright guys, we got mommy Ant-Man's phone number right here. I am so scared to do this. Okay, we're gonna call her. It's calling right now. Okay, I don't know if she's gonna pick up. Hello? Hello, is this Ant-Man's mom? Who's calling? What up, bitch? The act man follows up his tweet by saying, While hilarious, Unfortunately, now Tommy C has uploaded content from a user with a previous restriction, and therefore YouTube is well within their rights to take action against him in this video. Congratulations dipshit, you played yourself. He then shows a portion of the YouTube TOS that says, Posting previously removed content or content from terminated or restricted creators. If you post content previously removed for violating our terms of service, content produced by creators with the current restriction, or content from creators who have been terminated under our terms, the content may be removed your account may be penalized, and in some cases, your account may be terminated. And then he shows that that clip from JStation was uploaded by Tommy C. The quartering responds to Actman by saying, Stay focused. The Actman responds, I'm trying. Comment Cop responds to Actman by saying, Lol, what the fuck? It's a meme. Are you trying to get Tommy banned? Actman responds by saying, Have you not been paying attention? The whole point of this is that the rules are not being enforced. They need to be, or else crazy shit like Quantum TV happens. JStation is not allowed on the platform, and it is against TOS to upload content from a restricted user. I'd normally take a more lenient stance towards re-uploads of terminated users, but since this deals with the very real subject of my family being doxxed, I am taking this seriously. Why should I not? Common Cop responds by saying, JStation isn't actually calling your mother in that clip though. It's a satirical skit about a serious topic. That shouldn't be ban-worthy, and I don't care if it's from someone who's already been terminated, unless it's like EDP, lol. The Actman responds, not ban-worthy, strike-worthy. Common Cop responds, then that is very cringe worthy. Tommy C responds to the act man by saying, yeah, I was totally wrong about this guy. He never let his ego ever get in his own way. He never spurged out. Not a pro D platformer. Handled the situation perfectly. Night y'all. I'm gonna go watch Alex Jones on Joe Rogan. Peace. Obviously referring to the fact that Alex Jones is banned on YouTube, yet was still able to appear on Joe Rogan's YouTube channel. Tommy C then shows more DMs between him and the act man with the caption, some jokes are not okay. The DMs start out with act man saying, I would be fine with the joke if it was wasn't JStation, and this wasn't happening after no action was taken against my mother literally being doxxed. My sense of humor disappears at that point. The joke is my family was doxxed, and YouTube did nothing about it. Hard for me to laugh at that right now. Tommy then responds with a clip of the Actman and says, No, it's fine as is. Tommy C then shares even more leaked DMs with the Actman and captions them by saying, This could be it, but you never know. It starts with the Actman saying, Well, I tried being reasonable. Hope you at least understand the emotional position I have been in. I'm sure you think I send these messages to you for malice and drama, but the answer is no. And I do apologize if I lumped you in with Quantum unfairly, and or if you felt I did. Truly was not my intention. My intention all along has been to share the truth. I'm willing to send you whatever evidence you request. Tommy C then responds with a screen cap of the previous DMs between them and says, No you didn't. Actman responds, I'm not asking for anything in return, just letting you know where I stand. Tommy responds, Don't care, to which Actman replies, That's all there is to it then, best of luck. A couple hours after this happened, Augie tweeted out, Just spoke to the Actman for the last hour on Discord. He told me he had an immediate rash reaction 
reaction to Tommy and tweeted what he said out of anger, but has since calmed down and removed the post and backed off the stance that the video should be removed. I think the tweet was really dumb, and I told him that, and argued the many reasons of why it was bad, and while I don't think he agreed with all of my points, I think he recognizes it was bad, hence why he removed it. Willie Mac Show responds by saying, It's really annoying that everyone has to keep calming him down when it comes to simple questions or memes. Mischief responds, I'd absolutely agree with it if it weren't for the fact half of the questions being asked could have been answered through the bare minimum amounts of research, and Tommy specifically clearly has no intentions to talk to him or get answers. I don't agree with the tweet in question here made by the act man, but can you seriously not see how Tommy platforming someone purely so they could mock his family being doxxed wouldn't be taken kindly? He's proven repeatedly he has no intention of covering the topic properly. Tommy was 100% trying to annoy him enough to do something stupid in order to spin some stupid narrative. There's literally no other reason to platform JStation in the way he did, at least from my point of view. Willie responds, That does not justify anything Actman did. For fuck's sake, the man is an adult. If Actman is defending his joke about doxing YouTube employees, Tommy can absolutely meme Actman. Mischief responds, The only way you can see the two situations as the same is by removing all context behind them. Tommy wasn't just making a joke here, and that's clear to anyone. He was blatantly trying to bait the Actman, and obviously succeeded, so he could lush some dumbass narrative. I'm not trying to argue the Actman's tweet was okay. It blatantly wasn't. Told him as much in private, but let's not pretend that wasn't the intended reaction Tommy was trying to bait by platforming JStation to purely mock his family being doxxed. After all of this discourse, Actman obviously deletes the tweet as Augie said, and then tweets out, I have calmed down. Video games. That is all. And that would have been the end of this situation, if it weren't for the fact that the next day, Nicholas Diorio tweeted out, Feeling spontaneous. Might create a YouTube series called The Flagging Adventures with Actman. In it, I'll be telling my audience how not triggered I am about a joke, and totally not trying to get Tommy's channel struck. Twitter is the perfect place for someone like me. Also, sorry, not sorry. I am like obligated to leak this. He then shares a DM that was sent to him by the act man the night prior that says, Oh boy, Tommy C about to get a strike if I have anything to say about it, linking the J Station video that Tommy C made. Nick follows this up by saying, I like this guy's content, and he has been nice on stream. I even think he's in the right with this controversy at YouTube. That being said, act man's stunt he pulled last night is completely fucking unacceptable. I am more or less distancing myself from this whole story. And that that is finally it for the Twitter discourse against the act man. Completely crazy to see the conversation has went this far, considering that a couple days ago everybody was universally in favor of the act man, and while I don't agree with all the points that were made against him, I do think it was stupid and short-sighted of him to advocate for punishment on Tommy C's channel. But you guys might have a completely different opinion. Whatever it is, I would love to hear it in the comment section below, and if you want to discuss this with me more directly, be sure to follow me on Twitter so we can have some conversations over there. If you want to keep up to date with this story and many others, be sure to subscribe to my channel with notifications on. And with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.